Hello, fellow compatriots. This is your host, Kirby Chan here, and welcome to Ascending Depths. Now, this has been a multi year project. The longest project that I think I have ever done. And it is still going. The reason why you haven't heard that much when it comes to Ascending Dives besides a few live streams and so forth is because I didn't want to show anything in case if it amounted to nothing. Now, to before I get into the nit and gritty of what this video is, this video is mainly about production timeline. Now, before you even start in the comments right now, just know that the timeline already came and went. This project started in 2020 and I am gonna be covering all the events that have been happening behind the scenes so that going forward, I can go ahead and showcase exactly what I have been working on as of presently and will be working on because I didn't want to describe anything in case if it amounted to nothing but because I am pretty deep into this project already might as well finish it and make the best of it now let's start off with the year 2020 Precisely in December, it may have not been in December of 2020, it might have been a little bit earlier. Let us begin. Okay, December of 2020 was mainly research and design. Uh, mainly that entitled like a lot of color testing, testing different dyes, testing different like uh, Mika powders, which a Mika powder is basically a a colored powder where you can do metallics, you can do matte finishes, all sorts of stuff, and it's premium color palette, which means I was planning on, at the very beginning, hey, it would be cool if the figures can have metallic colors. Can it be done? Turns out, yes, it can, but we, I am still testing that when it comes to metallics. So far, when it comes to metallics, it's mainly been with resin. Speaking of resin, material testing. Material testing, I was testing out the pros and cons of resin, as well as the pros and cons of different plastics. I've been working with a lot of different plastics. Uh, mold testing, that's a big one. And I still have some early stuff from the molds, such as uh, the heat test, the precision test, durability, and life and of those molds whole bunch of testing because that is where the product is going to be coming out of it's going to be coming out of molds is this going to be silicone molds that's what i was testing out initially uh most specifically heat resistant uh silicone however due to the temperatures of the plastics as soon as they get out the injection molding machine it will warp the tolerance will shift and it won't be consistent. And I want to have a consistent and premium product, which is why, uh, which is what I learned back in 2020. I'm trying not to jump ahead here. It's hard to not jump ahead, but stay with me. I'll talk more about it later. Uh, production testing, part replication, minimizing demold time. When it came to testing, I actually got something right for that that I can show. So this over here, ladies and gentlemen, is my inventory when it came to the testing out the parts. Now, when it came to demolding time, the earliest molds that I, parts that I made was mainly of clay sculptures. And I would do all sorts of clay sculptures. I'm not gonna do up close. I'll do a few of them so you guys can see. There we go. And I did some clear casts as well of these, of these early parts. This was basically when I was starting off. I was trying to test that, hey, this is a cool part. What if I use that for a figure or something like that? This is 2020. 
All right, we haven't even reached 2021 yet. And I was testing out, testing out different demold time, uh, ways to demold, what would be the most quick, quickest, most efficient way, minimize bubbles, all that sort of thing when it came to making resin copies. The reason why I use resin so much is because uh, bubbles can also form in plastic, it turns out. So to design a mold in a way where it can breathe and uh, make a very accurate, precise molds. Best way to go ahead and test it out was through silicone and resin. That way I don't have to spend a lot of money in injection molding. And injection molding is different from a 3D printer. Let me just say, it's very different from a 3D printer. A lot of people think, oh, you're talking about a 3D printer, right? The thing that goes boop, 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 boop. Burp, burp. It's too slow. Too slow. I don't like it. Here's a CCBS phone. Woo! CCBS. So, I was testing out pre existing parts, and at the time when it came to the development of the figures, which we're going to go into now, we have 2021. Uh, but first, I also did early artwork as well, as well as a parts catalog. Studying, uh, studying efficient elements and minimizing cons. So basically, as soon as I made a part, I was figuring out how can I make it better? How can I make it easier, simpler, have a consistent, uh, have a design language in mind? Um, so 2021, equipment, that's the big one, equipment. And to go even further, this is the main reason why I did not want to talk about this because it's mostly boring jargon. I find it boring. I, I like to show a final product, but I find it boring. But it's a good idea to talk about this stuff. Equipment, injection molding machine, design and designing it to produce high volumes of material, minimizing production time for a product. Products in turn would have been innately designed for quick demold time at large quantities. This is crucial. A lot of injection molding machines that you will find in the market only have a small volume capacity. And the thicker, uh, the, the wider the diameter of the plunger, the, where the plastic goes into, the wider it is, the center, where, of that radius the center of it is the coldest part because the heating bands warm up around the plunger and it takes a while for that heat to go reach in the middle which is why uh, with a lot of injection molding machines you will see them having a narrow shaft now for me in my case uh, i can't have small volumes I need a high volume capacity, which is why I will showcase to you my injection molding machine. One moment. This is my injection molding machine. Oh God. Oh. Injection molding machine. I am strong. Uh, I built it. It's big, very big. And with this baby, my friend suggested I paint it red because Lego, I guess. And I agree. Uh, but, you got plunger mechanism. Works sufficiently. Uh, and it will be able to output a lot of plastic. How much plastic? Let me show you going to be injecting out this thick amount of plastic this came this was a raw uh raw stock that came out of this machine this wide thick thing this is big for comparison let me put it up next to a quarter so you guys know if you're in the U united states look at that that's thick that's big this is a quarter I'm sorry for all 
non-American viewers. But the point is, it is about, uh, for those who are not in the US, I'm guessing it's about like three centimeters or 2.8 centimeters to be precise. But regardless, I built this. So I had to build it myself because I needed the higher volume to not only produce as many figures as possible, but to also produce the packaging because and this ties heavily into the parts. Now, I'm not so sure if this was solely 2021. It might bled into 2022. I'm gonna make sure. Okay. Okay. So I'm talking about a mold. Yeah, okay. So when it came to the figures and the parts, we'll go over that in 2022. For now, we're in the year 2021. I wanted to ensure that when I made the molds, they will be two-sided. Think of it like a waffle maker or like a sandwich. You need one, both sides go together just like that and they come apart just like that. So the parts had to be innately designed to facilitate for that method of demolding. The benefits of that is for a quicker production time um, when this machine pumps out new parts, um, or prints out, I'll just say print so that you Gen Z can understand, uh, no offense, I love you, but when it prints out, it will be able to print them out every five minutes, a complete part, done. No question. Put the part in the bottom, push the pump down, bada beam, bada boom, new part. Or parts in less than five minutes. Now, the bigger the mold, especially if each part is two-sided, uh, the lot more quicker it will be for me to take those parts out because it's two-sided. It's like taking a waffle out of a waffle maker. It's very easy, very intuitive. And the molds, because uh, last year, like I was talking about 2020, because of how inconsistent it was, the new alternative is making the molds out of metal, which I do have the equipment for that. Let me go get it. <laughs> okay. Now for all intents and purposes, I'll just put it on this machine. So over in here, I have a furnace or a smelter, if you want to call it that. A smelter is basically, or furnace, is basically a device that is basically like a cylinder. Inside of it, you will find a crucible of which you can put raw ore or metal and it will melt them down to a molten state of which then once the metal is in a molten state, you can use it to create whatever you want. Either it be jewelry, either it be uh, machine parts, uh, utensils, whatever. You can make a whole bunch of stuff with molten metal, even pipes, maybe. But in, or a knife. If you want to create weapons, you can do that with a crucible, though probably would but want to go to a blacksmith for that. The furnace is what I will be using to melt down raw metal and materials. Now, where am I going to get this raw metal and materials? Well, Ascending Deaths innately is a project that is trying to reduce waste and to minimize the amount of clutter that is in today's world. As such, the metal I collect is recycled waste, basically aluminum cans, and or otherwise and they will be melted down typically of the same material and then turned into a mold you don't want to mix steel or what have you with aluminum bad idea you don't want to mix copper and aluminum you don't want to do that either basically ensure each of the metals match they're organized which i have been doing this entire time 
and that is what I'm going to be using to melting the metal. Now, the reason why I haven't been making a lot of molds lately is because it takes a lot of time and resources to collect recyclable waste. And even though I have my friends and the local community donating metal and materials for this project, I didn't want to waste it in testing until I am certain that I have parts that are ready for production. Specifically prototypes, which is where the resin copies come. Ah. And to show you, I have my tongs to grab mainly the, the metal and put it in there or pick up the crucible. And I have all my gear and equipment and I also got a pair of gloves. This stuff can get hot. So sometimes with metal, I'm going to be having this furnace or um, smelter up to like a thousand degrees Fahrenheit or what? I'm not going to say the Celsius, but you know, hot stuff. And there it is. It's tiny, it's not that big, but it's hot. And because it's hot, I had to take good care of it. I love it. Probably shouldn't have kissed it, but it's my baby and I get to kiss it if I want to. Okay, year three, 2022. So in the year 2022, which was last year, Redesign. So, as of late, let's let's move this back. As of late, when it came to the parts, and I have made so many parts. Um, the parts themselves, I was making parts, but they didn't have any cohesion. There was no building system per se. It was mainly just make a part and make it compatible. And I realized if I do this, this way, just keep making parts without any form of system or anything like that, it's going to be very expensive. Because doing some further research, because back in 2012, production is done and so forth when it comes to these sort of things, especially before the era of 3D printing, because I'm old fashioned like that, I realized that if we're talking exclusively Bionicle for a second, because it's kind of, this project in spirit is based off of that. So Bionicle, every single year you will find a new part or element be created because prior elements were not sustainable enough for a new line of wave of figures. Especially if you want to go ahead and make a unique design shape. So, for example, if you want to make a Tahu, you can't turn a Tahu into a Borok. You can't just curl into a ball, and you don't have around enough round elements to do so. With a Borok, the Borok itself are hyper-specialized parts, and you can't turn that Borok into a Rakshi uh, in, in those years. It was not really possible because of hyper specific those elements were making it relatively very difficult versus the lego brick which is capable of turning into all sorts of shapes designs sizes uh, architecture cars you name it you could do anything with a lego brick even if nothing's moving if you just have the two by four blocks and i was wanting to do that i wanted to do that i wanted to create a system a revolutionary system. So I dug deep. I studied very intently with my six plus years of making Lego creations online and sharing it with all of you, trying to figure out a particular building system or key aspects. What are the crucial building blocks the core that makes a buildable action figure. 
And you can break it down mainly to two things. Joints, shaping. Joints, shaping. Joints, shaping. And I was thinking, thinking very intently. Okay, joints and shaping, how do we do that? Do the ball and socket system. That's a good start. Issue is, we've kind of already seen that with, guess what, CCPS, and even that is limited. So it's like, okay, we can't just do skeletons and we can't just do shells. We need something more than that. What else is pretty, act, uh, pretty consistent for helping and make connection points? Pins and axles. And it's like, okay, let's integrate that with ball and socket system, what else? And we're not going to be looking at hyper-specific elements at all. And I realized, shaping. So, we use very hyper-specific shapes to create a design that we want, or combine different shapes to combine what we want. The only difference between the shapes mostly, and I've been looking through a lot of bionicle bins, and just parts especially looking at other like brands and ips you know and it's like oh different textures that's the main thing it's just a different texture but it's still the same general shaping all in all so it's like okay and that is where i come up with trips the tailored reconstructable intuitive building system now i will introduce the tailored reconstructable intuitive building system when I unveil the new ascending dev sets that I have worked so dil diligently on uh, for these past few years. Now, these new elements um, uh, will allow diversity within uniformity, uh, minimizing production costs drastically because instead of me always having to make new parts every single year, I can just make the same parts, different color, and maybe one or two new parts in that year. Versus like almost 80% new parts for just one set, which has been the case. And it will be more funner for you because guess what? You'll be able to create almost anything with this building system. And to it, because it enforces a complex yet simple design language. Not only that, uh, it has multi transformative elements, right? meaning elements with the ability to become new elements with two parts you can make a new part and i call this micro building system or skeleton uh, skeletal augmentation so you can call it an sa system or a mbs system uh, or mmbs micro modular building system whichever you prefer mmbs or sa I kind of like MMBS, let's call it that. That's a good one, I just came up with that just now. Story revision. Because of these new designs that I have made, I had to go ahead and revise a few things. And in the story, especially when it comes to character description, because from back in 2020, I was already starting to write the... I'm sorry for the noise. Yeah, I'm sorry for the noise. Okay, so I had to change it. The characters, description, because I've been writing since 2020. And it is still noisy, oh my God. But anyways, 2023, we're here, the present. What have I been doing in the present, which you may have noticed. A lot of preliminary artwork that I've been doing, um, as well as Starting off with the toy production, because now I, from last year, I already made the new building system. So now it just means making that new building system, which again, I will showcase 
when the actual products are showcased in their new packaging and all that goody two-shoe stuff. So stay tuned for that video. I have made parts, have made prototypes. They're not gonna be 3D printed, fully injection molded, and I hand carve all of the parts, making it a very high quality product because I actually took the time to carve it. Very time consuming, maybe. Maybe I should have just been on the computer and modeled it. But I like the, the handheld tactile feel. It's funner, it's easier, and it's more, I feel more involved in its development. So, creating physical copies of all new elements uh, for the toy production. Now easier thanks to the design work of the prior year, like I've said before, preliminary artwork production. So you may have noticed, I've been doing a lot of artwork, which I already spoke about earlier, and I'm still doing artwork. You're gonna be seeing a few speed paints and a few other things that I'm gonna be doing, showcasing new characters, as well as maybe some uh, comic book art, because this is all preliminary artworks. So I'm trying to do some drawing, doing my own aesthetic, my own design language when it comes to uh, representing these characters, these sets that I have now are making as we speak for that new uh, form of media. Okay, packaging. I'm gonna start working on packaging, which means making instructions. Now, I'm gonna be doing paper-based instructions, but I'm also going to be doing video instructions as well because the fun part that I know you like is my uh, video tutorials. You always liked my video tutorials whenever I did a custom Lego build, and you're going to be seeing that same love and care when it comes to the new building system. Now, of course, because I am going to be doing that, I'm going to also have my own part number catalog. So I had to do part numbers for all of that, which is very boring, but I have to do it so that you guys do not get confused and like, okay, uh, you know this part that's slightly shorter than this part, but looks the same? Uh, where does that part come from? I'm asking for a friend type of thing. Um, I'm just gonna do part numbers. You're not gonna be on BrickLink. You're not gonna be BrickLink, no because it's not Lego. It's not gonna be on BrickLink, I'm sorry. You're gonna to have to use my own personal catalog system once that also unveils. Um, creating new molds for a soon to release product. Again, melting metal down, turning that into a mold, and then parts get turned, go into the mold and then bazinga. There you go, Jimbo. You got yourself some new pieces. And uh, we're going to be doing some more color testing and then inventory stocking. Now that's a big thing. Inventory. Ever since 2020 up to now, I have so much plastic that it's not even funny. And this is only the beginning of it. I have a lot more plastic. It's a lot of plastic. I mean, a lot. Like, look at this. It's huge. It's a lot of plastic, and all this plastic is going to be for your action figures, your ascending deaths. Okay, so, uh, lost a little bit of footage there. It cut off, probably for the better, because I'm wandering around quite a little bit, and I don't want to be overly too static either. So I could be static and be like, hey, how's it going? But I don't want to do that. Kind of cringe but still. So inventory stocking, as you saw, I have a lot of plastic. That's not even the half of it. I have more plastic. Not only that, but I've been collecting a whole bunch of metal as well for making some molds, which is awesome. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more new molds uh, being produced. Well, you're not gonna see the molds. You're gonna see the parts. New parts, quicker production time. We went over this back in 20, and the timeline that I have here back in 2022, I believe. No, 2021. It was 2021. Oh my God. 
And so when it comes to inventory stocking, with the plastic that I collected, I will be able to start doing inventory of the products as well for ascending deaths. Now to it reiterate, uh, the release date is not this year. I'm not gonna be launching ascending deaths this year. They're not gonna go on sale. No comic books are gonna be on sale this year, nor will the comics or, or the novel that I'm writing. That comes the next year, which is next year. 2024 not 2023 2024 that's when you're going to be seeing that all the products tied to ascending depths now 2024 online sales and releases so i'm going to be doing a run of comics uh they will sell alongside the Terex pull it back i know i keep pushing back Terex, but the main reason i kept pushing him back so many times is so you have heard, I make a, I make parts before I even came up with the building system or realized that I need a building system. And it's like, what if I want to, what if I make Terex, everybody gets a Terex, and then they realize, like with the other waves of figures, they're not even compatible with Terex. Like very few parts you can use from Terex with the new figures. That's counterintuitive and that does not inspire fun. As a matter of fact, that is very limiting. So to reduce that fact, that's why I have been redesigning Terex so many times. Now Terex is gonna look like an astrolic, as you can see here. These little guys, the little astrolic sitting in the tree in the in the tree, you know, you gotta and a orange one there, you got a green one there, and you got a white one just sitting up there. They're cute little guys, you know? Adorable. But yeah, that is going to be the new Terex model. They're going to be looking like an Astrolake, which Terex is an Astrolake. Uh, a little guy. Now, with Ascending Deaths being released in the year 2024, uh, toy releases will be determined by the events in the story, such as releases are dictated to change. So, if you have a character that's in the story, uh, at, at a certain point in time, he may not show up right away in the with the with the release of the other characters, like because uh, one character may not be showcased until like later. So, in order to alleviate this, uh, all the characters that I have are going to be released when they appear in story. So, basically chronological order, there's not going to be any mixed releases, there's not going to be any non-canon. There might be non-canon, but I don't have any plans on it unless if I make something with the, with the Tribs or the MMBS um, until further notice. So as such, let's begin with year one, which is 2024. In year one, the head title of that year is Divides Dark Requiem. In Divides Dark Requiem, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Um, because we're talking about production right now. I don't want to talk too much about the story. I do have the story planned. Believe me when I say I do, because I've been playing this for years. Okay, wave one. We got five $15 sets. These are gonna be like your canister sets. They may drop down to $10, who knows, but like they took a while to make. And since I've been working by myself, it, it's been a struggle. So they're gonna be $15. Uh, four six star sets, little guys, kind of like the Astrolix, like you may have saw. Very small guys, but you're gonna love them. Two thirty dollar sets. These are gonna be your Titans, and then you got a whole bunch of combiners as well. So, a pretty good wave one. For wave two, you got seven fifty dollar sets. However, for the smaller sets and the Titan sets, they are subject to change uh, because. 
and the time of the narrative that we got going on here, there's going to be a lot of beasts, a lot of mythical beasts, in fact, you know, a lot of giant monstrosities. You may see a couple of hydras or something, but you're going to be seeing a lot of beasts uh, going against the main protagonists with, with, with these waves. Uh, there might be some antagonists, actual antagonists besides beasts, but so far it's mainly going to be beasts. I uh, hope that's okay. Uh, 2025, year two, is the Shadow's Gambit, which is going to be very, uh, very, uh, you're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. I want to keep talking about it, but I can't. Oh, okay. Um, twenty twenty six, year three, deep sea invasion, and then in twenty twenty seven, you're gonna get hunt for redacted. Can't talk about it. Why? Because the title has a big spoiler in it. And I don't want to go ahead and talk about something that has a lot of weight in the plot when it comes to Ascending Deaths because the title is a big, a big spoiler, so I can't say it the title, I'm sorry. And then 2028 Soft Reboot. So we got five years basically. Five years of story and how it will go. Um, I've already released like a, the prologue publicly of when it comes to Ascending Death, so you're going to be able to read that on the Kickstarter. Uh, I will read over it. I got like multiple chapters already written now for Ascending Deaths when it comes to the novel, especially. So the novel won't come out until like the run of comics already finished and then you could just buy the novel and just read the whole thing but that's only after the all the comics have been released which is why i've been doing a lot of preliminary artwork and stuff like that trying to draw out characters get my I muscle memory built in and how to draw uh, Voa, Huzu, Nadabi, Gondu, everybody, I can't, there's a few names that I cannot say because it's a spoiler and it's tight to the narrative, uh, but, yeah, there's that. Anyways, thank you all for watching, if you like this video, be sure to leave it a, a, a like, well, if you, Leave a like if you want to see more Ascending Devs content, not this particular video. I don't think I'm going to like posting this video all that much, but it's whatever. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead, leave a like, be sure to subscribe, stay tuned. There's going to be some speed paints coming up in the near future for all the characters that I'm making, because I kind of have to, to get myself familiarized, and it'll be a good way for you to check out all the cool designs. And again, the sets will be showcased in a future video. I can't show them right now. The parts do exist, just can't show them. Because I'd rather show an actual figure instead of like, hey, look at this little piece that I made. Hey, look at this little piece of me. Hey, look at this little. I don't want to do that. I want a figure. And you get to see the figure. We've seen Terex, but Mark II, but we're going to be seeing the new Mark going forward. But yeah, on that note though, be sure to check out my social media outlets because I'll be dropping a lot of artwork on there, mainly on Tumblr and Instagram. Those are the two main places that I will be posting. So be sure to check that out. And that's about it. So I hope you like this video and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye guys. I'm still not used to showing my face. Uh, was that awkward? I hope that was awkward. I, I hope it's not awkward. I hope it's not.
I hope not. Anyways, bye.